I want to share some pretty bizarre uh, symptoms that relate to a B1 deficiency. The biggest thing you need to know about B1 is that it relates to everything nerve, okay? So that includes the brain. So if there's a B1 deficiency, it can really affect all parts of the nervous system. You see, B1 is necessary to give energy to a very specific cell called the oligodendrocyte. Okay, what the heck is the oligodendrocyte? That is the cell that makes myelin, as in myelin sheath, the coating around the nervous system. And when that coating breaks down, because there's not enough B1, all sorts of things can happen. And that's what I'm going to cover today. Now, how do you become deficient in B1? Well, by consuming refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, as in the bread, the pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, anything with refined grains. This is why they enrich grains with synthetic vitamins and minerals, because it's depleted with certain nutrients. And then when you consume it, it can deplete you of these nutrients. All right, another common thing that will deplete you of B1 is tea, the tannins in tea will deplete you of B1, as well as the tannins in coffee, as well as the caffeine in both. Sulfites in wine, as well as dried fruit, okay, and other things as well. Alcohol, which is also in the wine, uh, raw fish, metformin, chlorine, as in tap water, will do it. And a lot of medications like antacid, antibiotics, especially Cipro, uh, diuretics, antidepressants like the SSRIs, birth control, seizure medications, Lupron, which is for endometriosis and conditions that relate to early puberty. And by the way, that drug has a tremendous amount of side effects. And then we have Gardasil and Cervarix, which both, if I'm not mistaken, and have been taken off the market, but they both are vaccines for HPV, the human papilloma virus. All right, so let's first talk about the first symptom. And this would be a symptom that's related to the cerebellum, okay? The cerebellum, it's the back part of the brain that if you looked at it, it would look very similar to cauliflower. But when you have a very severe deficiency in B1, you get degeneration in the cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum controls motor function. It controls a certain part of our language. It controls mood and attention. So when you reach out in space to get an object, you're using your cerebellum. When you're walking and you're coordinating all the different muscles, you're using your cerebellum. So when you get a short-circuited problem in the cerebellum, an electrical problem because the myelin is breaking down, uh, you can get Tourette's syndrome. And that is like random uh, vocalization of certain um, things that a person says, as well as random twitching and random motions that are just not under the person's control. Then you have another problem called ataxia. That is the gait problem. If you're trying to walk heel to toe, you won't be able to do it. You're shuffling, your movements are very erratic, um, and that is a cerebellum problem. Another problem with the cerebellum, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. That is a symptom of a major B1 deficiency. So you can see that uh, a B1 deficiency can affect a person in different ways, not always the same way. And realize I'm talking about uh, very specific symptoms that are related to the cerebellum, but there are many other symptoms that are related to different parts of your body that have nothing to do with the myelin sheath. Okay, another symptom that's related to a B1 deficiency is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Because think about it, we have hyperactivity. This is an excessive motion state with a lack of attention. Both things are controlled by the cerebellum. And then B1 is also needed for the autonomic nervous system. Because remember, I talked about B1 is everything neurological, right? The autonomic nervous system is composed of three different areas, the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest, versus the sympathetic, which is flight or fight, and then the enteric uh, nervous system, which is everything to do with digestion. So with this system being dysfunctional, you can get what's called POTS. And POTS is a condition where you stand up and you feel dizzy, you're, you're going to collapse. 
So you have a very difficult time standing up. It's actually a very devastating condition, which affects the autonomic nervous system. Now, even MS symptoms, because MS involves the brain, as well as myelin sheath, can mimic a B1 deficiency. So people that are sometimes diagnosed with MS really might just have a B1 deficiency. And then we have fibromyalgia symptoms too that can mimic a B1 deficiency because of the relationship between the nerve and the muscle connection. And then we have number eight, which is chronic fatigue syndrome, which also relates to the central nervous system. The nervous system powers uh, the energy through the body. And so if we're deficient in that electrical power, we're, we're just going to be exhausted all the time. And then we have another part of the nervous system called the peripheral nervous system, okay? And a common symptom with that is called peripheral neuropathy. Now, that is usually a situation where you see in diabetics where the bottom of your feet become painful, burning, numb, achy, that can then also occur in your hands, okay? Because, because the nervous system, especially myelin, is destroyed directly with sugar as well. So this is why you see this symptom in diabetes, but you can also have peripheral neuropathy with a B1 deficiency that's created another way. But also high levels of sugar will create a B1 deficiency and also create peripheral neuropathy. Now, sciatic nerve is insulated with myelin. So some people that are diagnosed with sciatica really have a B1 deficiency that is acting like sciatica. So what is the solution to all this? Well, I already mentioned all the things that can cause a B1 deficiency. So you're going to have to figure out which one is causing yours. But the other thing is just to take some B1. Make sure it's a natural version, not the synthetic version. Um, a good source of natural B1 also is nutritional yeast. It's not the only source, but it's a good source. But make sure you get the unfortified version. And then if you have a problem that's anything related to the myelin sheath, okay, which is a fat layer, I would recommend in addition to the natural B1, I would take a fat soluble B1 vitamin called benfotamine. And whatever it recommends on the back of the label, I would times that by four. Take four times as much because if you take the fat soluble B1 called benfotamine, it will penetrate the nervous system much better. Now, the next most important video to watch would be my presentation at my summit, my keto summit on B1. Check it out. I put it up right here.